never... Why can sound break a glass? Everything vibrates at a frequency, and if you know that frequency, you can control things. Could frequency and vibration be the keys to the universe's mysteries? If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And this is diagramming all the frequencies of the elements and what their vibrational frequencies are and the numbers that measure those frequencies. And they're all the numbers we get from looking at these ancient traditions that recur over and over and over again. The easiest way to perceive that vibration is through sound. As you know, sound can also be understood as the number of times air vibrates in a second. The Greek mathematician and philosopher Pythagoras, through a simple mathematical process, You see? It's the same tone, one octave higher. Now divide the next section. And the next. Pythagoras discovered the octave had a ratio of two to one. With simple fractions, he got this. And from this harmony in numbers developed the musical scale of today. Is credited with being the first to devise the diatonic scale, also known as the octave. If you know how to play music, you probably understand these numbers. When say A432, mean 432 vibrations of air per second. When you listen to music, your ears receive the sound and your brain processes it so that you can feel the melody. In fact, your whole body vibrates to the rhythm of the song. Why? Because sound travels not only through air, but also through liquids and solids. Mathematically, the highest note in an octave has a vibration rate or frequency that is twice that of the lowest note. This means that we will have many octaves that are continuously connected. And by continuously doubling like this, you will get the spectrum of light. Is this a coincidence, or is everything in this world just vibrations? Are you thinking? Your thoughts are energy because you can transform your thoughts into sound. And of course, sound is just a version of light with slower vibrations. Light is energy, as described in Einstein's famous equation. If you don't believe it, the atomic bomb is proof that matter is also energy. So, what we observe as material bodies and forces are nothing but shapes and variations in the structure of space itself. If vibration is the key to unlocking the world, why is it not often mentioned in mainstream science? And in order to avoid the kinds of fate that befell Tesla and Reich, Robert Oppenheimer, Victor Schauberger, and so many others that were working in these fields, all kind of converging on this same insight. It's been conducted in secret. Now, let's take a look at some of the discoveries about vibration. The Russian biophysicist and molecular biologist Pyotr Gardyajev and his colleagues explored the vibrational behavior of the DNA. The bottom line was, living chromosomes function just like solitonic holographic computers using the endogenous DNA laser radiation. This means that they managed, for example, to modulate certain frequency patterns onto a laser ray and with it influence the DNA frequency and thus the genetic information itself. Gardyajev's research group succeeded in proving that with this method, chromosomes damaged by X-rays, for example, can be repaired. They even captured information patterns of a particular DNA and transmitted it onto another, thus reprogramming cells to another genome. For example, frog embryos to salamander embryos simply by transmitting the DNA information patterns. The embryos develop into healthy adult salamanders. They never revert back to frogs. In 1938, Dr. Royal Raymond Reif successfully cured 16 cancer patients who were terminally ill. 
he developed a healing device that used electromagnetic frequencies to specifically target and eliminate diseases. This groundbreaking discovery had the potential to revolutionize the medical industry. However, for unknown reasons, this information did not become widely known. Recently, a music professor named Anthony Holland decided to investigate the effects of audio frequencies on microbiology. Dr. Holland established a non-profit organization and conducted experiments using harmless microorganisms like paramecium. These organisms are being shattered by our electronic signals. And normally they're very fast swimmers, but when you approach a frequency to which they are vulnerable, they begin to slow down, then they stop, and then they begin to disintegrate within about three minutes. He discovered that a specific combination of related frequencies could completely destroy targeted cells, similar to how a wine glass shatters. Inspired by this finding, he embarked on a quest to identify frequencies that could break cancer cells. Over the course of 15 months, we try hundreds and hundreds of frequencies, if not thousands, until we find the magic combination. After a year of research, he successfully identified frequencies that could combat pancreatic cancer and leukemia cells, just like Dr. Roy Alreif. Through various experiments, he achieved a 60% destruction rate of these cells, mirroring Dr. Royal Rife's achievements. In addition to using this knowledge for healing purposes, there is also proof of how ancient civilizations utilized sound, vibrations, and frequencies to sculpt and lift massive stones. If you don't believe such technology could exist, just look at the Al Nasla rock formation located in Tamer Oasis, Saudi Arabia. To get a more visual understanding of how sound vibration can affect matter, let's go back in time. In the 18th century, German scientist and musician Ernst Kladny, known as the father of acoustics, he demonstrated in simple visual experiments that sound affects matter. When he drew a violin bow around the edge of a plate covered with fine sand, the sand formed various geometric patterns. Hans Jenny took these studies further and defined a new science, cymatics, developing devices and machines that generated frequencies on different types of mediums. Dr. Jenny placed sand, fluid and powders on metal plates, which he vibrated with a special frequency generator and a speaker. His experiments produced beautiful and intricate patterns that were unique to each individual vibration. Moreover, these varying patterns remained intact as long as the sound pulsed through the substance. If the sound stopped, the pattern collapsed. Jenny believed that everything in nature reflected inherent patterns of vibration, characterized by number, proportion, and symmetry. He referred to this as the harmonic principle. The sound. Sound is a factor which holds it together. Sound is the basis of form and shape. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. We are told that this is how the world began and how creation took shape. If we put that into the modern idiom, and say that into the great voids of space came a sound and matter took shape. Another notable scientist, Dr. Masaru Emoto, a Japanese researcher specializing in water, discovered the true nature of water and its susceptibility to our thoughts and vibrations. Through his extensive research, Emoto photographed thousands of water crystals exposed to different thoughts and emotions. He found that the most beautiful formations occurred when water was exposed to words like love and gratitude. Conversely, water exposed to negative emotions and words such as hate formed incomplete and asymmetrical patterns with dull colors. So, now you know what to do, right? Because our bodies are made up of 70% water. This means that our thoughts and emotions will have some impact on our physical and mental health.